Hi, we are now on chapter 3 and it is the biochemistry part of this course. It includes the discussion on biomolecules and cellular energy transformation. At the end of the discussion, it is aimed that students be able to have better understanding of biomolecules, their structure and synthesis, as well as the ATP being the energy currency of life. Foods such as bread and cheese are rich sources of biological macromolecules or simply biomolecules. And what do we mean by biomolecules? Biomolecules are chemicals or molecules that are present in living organisms. Generally speaking, biomolecules are compounds of carbon and based from the table, carbon constitutes the second largest percentage in living matter. It is also considered to be the most versatile and the most predominant element of life. Cellular pool, on the other hand, is the sum total of the different types of biomolecules, compounds, and ions present in a cell. Biomolecules can be divided into two, inorganic and organic, or in terms of size, the micro and macro molecules. Carbohydrates are the most abundant organic molecules in nature. The term carbohydrate is derived from the French term hydrate de carbone and are defined as organic substances having carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, wherein hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratios as found in water or H2O. Carbohydrates can be divided into three subgroups, namely the monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, and the polysaccharides. Another abundant organic molecules of the living system are the so-called proteins. Proteins are polymers of amino acids, which play an important role in the architecture and functioning of the cell. Another macromolecules are the lipids. These are organic substances which are relatively insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvent like alcohol and ether. They are also called the chief concentrated storage form of energy constituting about 3.5% of the cell content. We can find some hydrophobic lipids in the fur of aquatic mammals such as this river otter which serve as their protection and in waxy covering of leaves of some plants. The two main classes of nucleic acids are the DNA and the RNA. DNA is the chemical basis of heredity and it is considered to be the reserve bank of genetic information. It is also responsible in maintaining the identity of different species of organisms over million years. Cellular function is under the control of DNA, which is the basic information pathway. Lastly, DNA directs the synthesis of RNA, which in turn directs protein synthesis. Our daily food intake includes carbohydrates, fats, and proteins to produce energy. Cellular respiration is the degradation of biomolecules to generate energy that cells can use. It is sometimes called aerobic respiration. The preferred source for cellular respiration pathway is a simple sugar called glucose. There are four main stages in cellular respiration, namely glycolysis, intermediate, citric acid cycle, and electron transport system. Almost all living organisms carry out glycolysis as part of their metabolism. It is an anaerobic process which means the process does not use oxygen while the other three processes are aerobic since they require oxygen. Glycolysis happens inside the cytoplasm of the cell. In glycolysis, glucose molecules are split into two pyruvate. In this pathway, one glucose molecule can yield a net of two ATPs. There are 10 enzymes needed for this reaction to proceed plus 2 ATP molecules to produce pyruvate and 4 ATP. Hexokinase phosphorylates glucose using ATP as the source of the phosphate, producing glucose 6-phosphate, a more reactive form of glucose. The reaction prevents the phosphorylated glucose molecule from continuing to interact with the GLUT proteins or the so-called glucose transporter proteins and it can no longer leave the cell because the negatively charged phosphate 
will not allow it to cause the hydrophobic interior of the plasma membrane. In the second step of glycolysis, an isomerase converts glucose 6-phosphate into one of its isomers, fructose 6-phosphate. An isomerase is an enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of a molecule into one of its isomers. This change from phosphoglucose to phosphofructose and it allows the eventual split of the sugar into three carbon molecules. The third step, which is considered to be a second phosphorylation or specifically the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase, a second ATP molecule donates a high-energy phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate producing fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate. In this pathway, Phosphofructokinase is a rate-limiting enzyme. It is active when the concentration of ATP is high and it is less active when ATP levels are low and the concentration of ATP is high. Thus, if there is sufficient ATP in the system, the pathway slows down. This is a type of end product inhibition since ATP is the end product of glucose catabolism. The newly added high-energy phosphates further destabilize fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The fourth step in glycolysis employs enzyme aldolase to cleave 1,6-bisphosphate into three carbon isomers, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. In the fifth step, an isomerase transforms the dihydroxyacetone phosphate into its isomer, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Thus, the pathway will continue with two molecules of a single isomer. At this point in the pathway, there is a net investment of energy from two ATP molecules in the breakdown of one glucose molecule. Steps 1 to 5, the first half of glycolysis, which is also called the energy-requiring steps or the preparatory phase where glycolysis has caused the cell two ATP molecules and produced two small three-carbon sugar molecules. Both these molecules will proceed through the second half of the pathway and sufficient energy will be extracted to pay back the two ATP molecules used as an initial investment and produce a profit for the cell of two additional ATP molecules and two even higher energy NADH molecules. The second half of glycolysis which involves the energy releasing steps and this can also be called the payoff phase. Let's focus on one of the GADP molecule from the preparatory phase. This GADP molecule is oxidized to become 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which involves the enzyme called glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase. This requires NAD and a free phosphate or inorganic phosphate to occur. In the seventh step catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate donates a high-energy phosphate to ADP, forming a molecule of ATP. This is an example of substrate-level phosphorylation. A carbonyl group on the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is oxidized to a carbonyl group, and 3-phosphoglycerate is formed. In the 8th step, the remaining phosphate group in 3-phosphoglycerate moves from the 3rd carbon to the 2nd carbon, producing 2-phosphoglycerate, an isomer of 3-phosphoglycerate. The enzyme catalyzing this step is a mutase. Inulase catalyzes the 9th step. This enzyme causes 2-phosphoglycerate to lose water from its structure. This dehydration reaction resulting in the formation of a double band that increases the potential energy in the remaining phosphate band and produces phosphoenol pyruvate. The last step in glycolysis is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase and results in the production of a second ATP molecule by substrate level phosphorylation and the compound pyruvic acid or its salt form pyruvate. So all in all, there are two ATPs invested and four ATP molecules are produced, so a net gain of two ATPs. Also in glycolysis, two NADH are produced which will be used in the latter process. The pyruvates produced have two pathways. If sufficient oxygen is available, they will enter into the intermediate stage. And if there is no sufficient oxygen, pyruvate is con converted to lactate. At the intermediate stage, the pyruvates enter 
into a mitochondria and will then be converted to acetyl coenzyme A. Then two molecules of NADH are produced and also CO2 molecule is released. After the intermediate stage comes the citric acid cycle which starts with the condensation step combining the two carbon acetyl group with the four carbon oxaloacetate molecule to form a six carbon molecule of citrate. The coenzyme A is bound to self-hydryl group and diffuses away to eventually combine with another acetyl group. Step 2, citrate loses one water molecule and gains another acitrate is converted into its isomer isocitrate. Step 3, isocitrate is oxidized producing a 5-carbon molecule, alpha-ketoglutarate, together with a molecule of CO2 and two electrons which reduce NAD to NADH. Steps 3 and 4 are both oxidation and decarboxylation steps, which release electrons that reduce NAD plus to NADH and release carboxyl groups that form CO2 molecules. Alpha keto glutarate is the product of step 3, and a succinyl group is the product of step 4. Step 5 a phosphate group is substituted for coenzyme A, and a high energy bond is formed. This energy is used in substrate level phosphorylation during the conversion of succinyl group to succinate to form either guanine triphosphate or ATP. There are two forms of the enzyme called isoenzymes for this uh, step depending upon the type of animal tissue in which they are found. One form is found in tissues that use large amounts of ATP such as heart and skeletal muscle. This form produces ATP. The second form of the enzyme is found in tissues that have a high number of anabolic pathways such as liver. These forms GTP and GTP is energetically equivalent to ATP, however, its use is more restricted. In particular, protein synthesis primarily uses GTP. There are 32 to 34 ATPs produced in the electron transport system. So in glycolysis and citric acid, two ATPs are produced from each process. Therefore, the total produced ATPs in cellular respiration is around 38. In reality, there are only 28 to 30 ATPs that remain due to the fact that ATPs are consumed by other processes along the pathway to complete their functions. Other simple carbohydrates such as fructose and galactose can also enter the glycolysis pathway. Proteins are made up of amino acids. If the body needs to use amino acids for energy, they need to remove first their amino group and then they can now enter either in the intermediate stage or the citric acid cycle. Lipids and fats, on the other hand, can also enter the cellular respiration pathway but the glycerol unit has to undergo modification step, then it can enter in the glycolysis stage, whereas the fatty acids can be broken down further and enter the citric acid cycle. Thank you for listening and I hope that you've learned something about biochemistry and its application to cellular energy transformation.